Okay, this is Dr. Kraus with the Python for Engineers Mac installation details. Uh, by the time I'm done, I'm probably going to accidentally scare you into just doing Anaconda. Um, that's not bad. There's nothing wrong. I think learning Python is a super powerful, super important tool. And if Anaconda helps you get into that quicker, that's great. You could always go back later and uninstall Anaconda and install uh, Python using Homebrew. I personally think there's an incredible amount of power in learning to use the terminal. And so I do want to encourage you to try the terminal installation. And if you're one of my students and not just some person on the internet watching this, I'm glad to help you walk through these steps. Just set up an appointment with me, send me an email, whatever. Um, but Anaconda is out there and it's easy. So if you want to do the Anaconda option, just open up the browser of your choosing and search using the search engine of your choosing for Anaconda Python. Um, that might take you to this main page or there might be a download link. And I'm assuming if we go to the main page, there ought to be a download Anaconda button that's pretty easy to find. And then choose the Apple logo and download the graphical installer. And that should be just like any other Mac software package you've ever installed. So that's out there. Know that it's out there. It's not a bad option. If you're not yet scared and want to try the terminal, I'm going to rep recommend Homebrew and Pip. Um, so the trick is a Mac has this really nice, pretty, easy to use graphical interface, but behind it is the power of Unix and the terminal. And so people who are migrating from Linux or Unix, such as I did to Mac, know that power's back there. The trick is um, Homebrew, I think has gained a lot of popularity and is a good answer. The question is when you do the actual like system level tools, do you let Apple do as much as they wanna do and then you only fill in the gaps or do you just stay away from Apple and do all your own things? So um, think, and Mac ports, to my understanding, are more, we're just gonna do everything and we're not gonna depend on Apple for anything. That's fine, it makes it a very Linux-like system, Unix-like system, but um, I prefer Homebrew personally. Um, and then we're gonna let Pip do most of our Python instruction for us. So the trick is, um, I found a new home page that I just discovered. Apparently using Brew to install Python 3 is just a little tricky, not bad. Um, I was using Python 2 up until last summer. Um, 2.7, finally have made the leap to 3, and I think it's fine, but there's a lot of Python people out there that are still kind of straddling that fence because there's so much legacy code for Python 2. So Homebrew will support both. I'm going to encourage you just to do Python 3. I think that's going to be best. Um, and so these installations, apparently that's Python, I don't know, the Hitchhiker's Guide to Python is a book, and this is a supporting website, and he talks about how to install Python 3 on a Mac, and I think that's the best way to go. Um, this other blog is good, but we'll probably, you'll end up with Python 2.7, which we can totally work with that for my class. Um, it's just a little bit dated, but it's not terrible. Okay, so the first thing you gotta do is install some kind of compiler for C code and those kind of things. And the easiest way to do that is to go to the Mac store and search for Xcode and grab the Xcode developer tools. That's kind of a, like a one gigabyte big mess. Um, and you may have to do some things to install the command line tools or maybe just the command line tools. Not exactly sure how that goes, um, but it's there. Once you have Xcode installed, and that could take a little while, um, you got to install Homebrew. The best way to do that is to go to their web page, um, which is brew.sh, grab whatever this command is and copy it, and then we're just gonna paste that into a terminal. Now, if you're not a terminal user, you may not have a little terminal Apple or icon just sitting on your dock. It might be under applications on your dock. Um, you can also do a four finger pinch on your track bar and type T-E-R and get to it that way. Um, but the absolute worst case, if you just opened up a finder window, I assume you have an applications folder in your sidebar, go to you. So applications, utilities, and there's, whoops, there is a terminal. And yours will probably come up white and not semi-transparent because I've modified mine to try to make it cool looking. Um, paste that in there, hit enter. I'm not gonna do that because I already have uh, brew, Homebrew installed, but that would install Homebrew for you. And then once you have Homebrew, um, kind of the scariest step is you need to modify your path so that it goes to Homebrew before it goes to anywhere else. And Homebrew lives in user local bin. Uh, user local is the folder that um, Homebrew likes to hang out in. So copy that. And I'm vaguely remembering here that there was some kind of controversy with 
OS, I don't know, 10.11, whatever El Capitan is, I think, um, that it might not have a user local and you might have to create it from a terminal. If that's true, I'm sorry, we'll have to do that. Um, send me an email or something. Um, but you got to edit a file called dot profile that contains kind of a lot of your configuration settings for where the operating system is going to look for folders. So you should be able to type open dot e apparently means use the built in text editor and dot profile. There's a small chance. I don't think it's possible. So if you do that, it ought to open this thing up and then you would just scroll down kind of towards the bottom and somewhere paste in this line that, that puts user local bin on your path. And then save that with a command S and then quit it with a command Q. And then you can echo path with a dollar sign all capitals. And you should see, for example, user local bin somewhere in your path. Now, on the very small chance that you don't have a dot profile file, then do touch dot profile, hit enter first. That'll create the file and then do an open dash E dot profile. So that should work. And then you're ready to let Homebrew start to install some things for you. So if you were to take brew install, and I'm going to specifically recommend you do Python 3, copy that, paste it, hit enter, Homebrew will do its installation thing. And then somewhere along the line, you just want to verify if you did which Python, or maybe even specifically which Python 3. Now mine will give weird answers because I have Python 2 and 3 set up so I can switch back and forth between them. And so yours should, so the right answer, the answer that you're looking for is user local bin Python, which is covered over here on the pen and pants page. So if you type which Python and you get back this answer, uh, possibly with a three after it, or which Python three and you get back this answer with a three after it, then you've done everything correctly. And then you're ready to start installing. Um, so homebrew should get you pip and then you should be able to do things like pip install numpy and that should just work again that's already installed on mine and so i'm not going to do it um, so once you have python 3 installed using um, brew homebrew i would switch back over to the pen and pants installation and follow his instructions um, although again these have gotten a little bit dated i don't think there is a g fortran package anymore i think so if I say G Fortran, I'm pretty sure it's going to come back with that doesn't exist, install GCC and G Fortran will get yes. So G Fortran has been wrapped under GCC. So install, so brew install GCC. Um, I shouldn't have hit enter. It's already installed. I guess it doesn't matter. Um, then pip install Python, brew install package config, pip install matplotlib. You shouldn't need, so it, if you're reading this, it tells you what to do. This shouldn't be necessary because this should just work. And then you should have a basic installed uh, scientific Python ready to go once you do all of those things. And you're like, how could I prove that to myself? Um, one way, um, okay, so it doesn't talk about, so you also wanna do a brew install IPython. Um, again, I hit enter on something that should already exist. Um, whoops, oh man. Let me think about that. Um, let me do a little digging around and remember how to use Homebrew to install the Jupyter Notebook and all that kind of stuff. Oh, it's a pip thing, that's why. So pip install IPython should just work. Um, and so it's already done. And so you should, for example, if you wanted to do it from the command line, do a IPython dash dash pylab. That should bring up a little terminal editor kind of thing. And if you said uh, import numpy as mp, import uh, matplotlib.pyplot, I'm doing this off the top of my head, that's a little dangerous, as plt, and then t was equal to np.a range. So we're going to create a, vector, a time vector like so, and then y is equal to np.sign of 2 times np dot pi times t and then plt dot figure plt dot plot t comma y and so we wouldn't normally do this from the command line we'll do it from a, the jupyter notebook um, but i have it working and it's plotting and things are going well for me 
I'm going to hit Control D and Enter to exit out of there. So at that point, I have everything basically working. And if you get really lucky, you should be able to type Jupyter dash notebook. And that would launch a server. And this is how we're going to generally interact with Python code. And if I grabbed a new window, and I have um, my those commands I just remembered off the top of my head defaulted into uh, something I've saved on my notebooks or, and as a browser shortcut. And so if I did that, and then I did the same stuff that I just did. I've now generated an inline plot in my Jupyter Notebook, and we'll talk more about that in a coming video. So that's it. I think you basically have an installed, working Mac installation from Homebrew, and you're learning to use the terminal, and you have Python ready to go for scientific purposes. Thanks.